Because might well come back to the shop. <laughs> Hot. Anyway, uh, we're gonna do another shop chat. This is extremely important. Every time I do a video about combustion, um, just compression and heat and stuff, uh, we've done the thing with the pistons recently, with uh, heating up pistons and the transfer of thermal energy. People seem to still have that. I get lots of emails. I don't quite understand, Matt. Does that mean this? Does that mean that? If you make ceramic components, if you do this, if you do that, I don't understand. Or they come out with some, so does that mean this? And I go, no, you've got it completely wrong. So let's just sort out the whole thing about heat. <laughs> right then, so we're gonna do uh, a little example here of how this whole system works of heat transfer. So what we've got here is we have got atoms and we'll just say these atoms are atoms of aluminium forget any kind of alloy this is severely simple and imagine that each atom has a bucket one of these buckets so each atom has three buckets and this bucket contains heat it contains a bag of heat right that's the only way i can think about it now right now let's just say that these at the all these atoms are at 20 degrees c right so that means because we're 20 degrees C, which would be 109, 290 Kelvin. Might as well put that. 290, not degrees, you twat. Kelvin, like so. We've already got one of these balls full in all of these atoms. Then what we do is we come along with a blowtorch. We'll use the same example we did for the pistons and the blowtorch. You apply heat here. And this uh, blowtorch is shitting out, let's just say, two balls per second. Right, so in our first second, these lines are just to help show you in a crystal matrix the layers of atoms. So this is just nice, easy, separate. So you can see if I get rid of this line, these balls become a bit weird. So we can release two balls per second. So this is two heat per second, right? So the first second, what we do is, well, these atoms fill up like this. Two balls, great fun. And the only rule in this entire system is that I can only hand off heat, but I can't hand off heat so it leaves me with less. So we've got two balls, two balls, one ball, one ball, one ball, one ball, right? So nothing happens initially. If you measure this temperature, we are still at 20 degrees C, right? We're all good at this end. So just say the bottom of the piston or the end of a big long rod or something like that. Now, we've got two here, and we can't hand off half buckets of fucking heat uh -huh. or whatever. Now, we can't hand one to here because then this would have two and this would have one, and that's an imbalance. Like I say, you can only give off heat, and we'll explain why in a second, but you can only give off heat to a lower energy state, to a lower amount of buckets. So then the next second goes past, so we're on second two, and we fill these two like this. But now we've got three... And now we've got zip. we've got one on this one and one on this one. So what we can do is we can actually get rid of this heat. We can pass this heat on to this bucket like this. And what you'll notice is we've got two and two. We're all good. And then we've got one. And then what happens is the third second we add more heat to these atoms. So now we're full. Three, two, one. And then what we do is we add more heat. Well. As soon as we can't add more heat to this, so we dump more heat into this and immediately it passes it off straight to this one. Right, now we've got three, three, one. This is one less. We can delete this. We can pass this on like so. And now we've got three, two, two. Then we add more heat and this heat passes to this, fills these in. So that's what happens like so. And then what we do is we add some more heat and then this is at full capacity, this is at full capacity and then that one trickles down, it gets past this, which past this, past this and now we're all full. This is just how heat works. So when we saw that experiment with the guy with the blowtorch, he has basically got hot here and pretty much fuck all like this. That's what that experiment is showing. When he's heating it from the top, we've got more heat here and not enough heat here. Which would immediately mean that we delete this, 
delete this and we add this into here and you can see that it balances itself out the heat can't shift from a higher energy from a lower energy state to a higher energy state it just doesn't it from a yes from a lower energy state to a higher energy state why this is all to do with entropy right and if it wasn't this way, it's called the arrow of time because the only thing that changes any of this is time. We have to wait for time. If there was no time, then nothing would happen. Literally, you cannot change. You have what it was and what it is now. All chemical reactions, everything, we need this time component. If we had no time, things could run fucking backwards, forwards. You'd have all sorts of shit going on. You know, hot things a fucking heating up even hotter drawing energy from the rest of the universe it'd just be a fucking mess we call this the the arrow of time um because time is the factor that changes it from one state to another um brian cox did a video about the arrow of time and how uh glaciers don't fall off and then all of a sudden collect themselves back up and put themselves off it's all about the chaos energy order and blah 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 but the fact of the matter is it's a bit like gravity if you've got a ball up here on a ledge down here the ball can only fall down to a lower energy potential it can't hop up without you putting energy in and this is the whole thing that it's the same thing with temperature Tran energy transfer will only transfer from something that's got a lot more energy but it can always fall down but it can't go up unless you use energy in some other way so you have to put energy in so basically, if you look at it like that, you might think, well, Matt, you've got a piston. You are heating it up. It's going up in temperature. But that's because I have a butane torch with a lot of energy in it. And I have to dump a lot more energy in to get this to rise up to the level. So the energy potential in this blowtorch is higher than the piston energy will ever get simple as that work is being done there is waste heat that leaks out to the rest of the universe blah 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 but that is the transfer of heat there is nothing we can do about it it's just a fundamental thing and thank god it is the way it is because like i say if we didn't have this it'd be just a fucking mess but that is how heat transfers through things it is trying to as you could see when we're doing the balls um where you had three two one like this it just moves further down, so you've got three, 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 two, one. Three, 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 two, one. Like that. It just keeps on transferring down. But when you cut the heat, then this basically keeps on passing this down until the whole thing is heated up. And if it's not, it just radiates, the whole thing just radiates heat outwards. But as soon as there's an imbalance, so let's just say we get rid of that one unit there or these two units there but there's still these two atoms here then each one of these has got to lose a bit of energy to that one it's just the way it works um one way of thinking about energy levels or one way i like um is cups when you have cups stacked on top of each other like this you have to fill this up with water before it'll trickle down and start filling up these and then you've got to fill this up and trickle down into these. It doesn't work the other way. Um, and that's kind of like energy levels. That as you saturate this with heat, it then heats up the next one until that's saturated. And then heats up the next one. That's not entirely true. And it's not the best analogy for the simple fact is that uh, the atoms on the top layer don't just heat till melting point until the rest. It basically... But you can see the, the function of... You know when one fills up fills up but when they're all full this is an excellent example of heat when they're all full any additional heat you put in just keeps on going down and down and down until it floods your kitchen <laughs> you get what i mean hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit